Hello friends and welcome. Today's goal is to help you improve your awareness, which is that when you're playing, you can't get too caught up in everything going on your screen right here in the middle, looking at creeps, all of that. You have to stay aware of the game in a bigger sense. A lot of people report feeling like they don't know what to do. How do I make these decisions? I don't know where I'm supposed to go. And I think it's because many people need to work on this awareness skill, which is done primarily through one, looking at the game time here at the top of the screen, then back to your middle doing whatever and then looking over at the mini-map. Um, you're gonna spend more time looking at the mini-map than the time, but both are very important. Uh, by extension, when you look at the mini-map, something you're also gonna have to do as part of that is say, oh, who are these heroes top? What's this Zeus have? And then I have to look at the bottom of the screen to look at his inventory and check out his mana. For example, oh, what's the mid Kunkka building? You know, maybe I need to buy detection because he's building a shadow blade. Or am I worried about dying? Oh, he only has 10 mana left, so actually he can't combo me, so I'm actually very safe. I don't need to play scared. A lot of this is uh, gathering information, this sense of awareness, and I talked about this in my How to Get Out of the Trench video, which you haven't seen. Check it out, maybe. I think it's pretty good. Um, but it's one thing to tell you, hey, have better awareness, but then another thing to actually help you all improve. So that is the goal of today, and it's going to be a pretty active video. I have designed it to make you all do stuff that I hope will help build this habit of awareness. So if you're busy right now, maybe pause the video, come back later, or maybe watch it and then watch it again later because that's good for video analytics, woo. Throughout the course of this video, I am going to overlay a game. I'm gonna have the top bar, the mini map, and this little inventory HUD thing here. And I want you to constantly cycle through these. I want you to go to the middle of the screen. I'm gonna have boring slides. You're not gonna miss that much by not paying attention. Middle of the screen, top to look at the time, back to the middle, look at the mini map. You might have to look here for a second to absorb the information. Back to the middle, back to the mini map, back to the middle. Top, middle, mini map, middle, mini map, middle, because you have to look at the mini map more. And you're just gonna go through these motions a lot. Uh, sometimes Crit, he's the guy we're watching. He might select a hero. If you can look at the inventory and grab that information real quick, great. But you're not the player. You would normally know to like, oh, I gotta look at the bottom now because I'm clicking an enemy hero. Um, you're not gonna know when Crit's gonna do that. So I wouldn't expect you to uh, see all of those. That's not the important part. The main thing I want you to know is to constantly look at the time and constantly look at the mini map. And I want you to do this throughout this entire video. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I don't care. A Dota game is like 30 minutes to an hour. And the whole time you gotta have map awareness. So to build this habit of developing map awareness, I think it's really important to spend some time like doing these really exaggerated um, practices of constantly looking at the time, mini map, middle time, middle map, whatever, you know? And then when you play, you're gonna naturally focus more on the middle of the screen, but hopefully throughout the course of this video and some other practice we're gonna talk about, that will have helped start building this habit to remember, I gotta check the time, I gotta check the mini map. And I think maybe you'll be surprised by how much, uh, how much of the game you'll actually understand just by looking at the mini map, even though you're not gonna see anything else going on, I think you'll be surprised. Um, and hopefully that'll help you appreciate the value of like why you have to watch this mini map so much when you're playing your own games. Certain times should make you think of certain actions. Whether you're gonna do them or not, that is up to you in that very particular situation, but you should at least think, hey, it's this time, that means I should be thinking about these possible actions. Do I need to do any of them? No, okay, I'll do something else. So let's talk about some of those. Every minute a camp is gonna spawn, starting at one minute, two, three, four, and so on, camps will spawn. So. You wanna watch where you're standing around the like 55 seconds, right? Make sure you're not in the middle of a box. Uh, your carry is going to be pretty annoyed if you accidentally block camps that you really don't need to be. You're just losing money for your team. If you're still in the laning stage, um, about 13 to 18 seconds and then 43 to 48 seconds, those are roughly the pull timings. Uh, there's some you know windows there, that's not, the, that's not the important part of this. The point is around those times is when you gotta hit the camp to do the pull, which this is not enough to know alone. You also gotta know how long it takes to walk to the camps. So if you're in the lane, as it gets to around five seconds, it kind of depends how fast your hero is and what time you plan on trying to do the pull. You gotta start thinking like, okay, I can't uh, can't commit too far. I can't walk too far away because I could go to that small camp and do a pull. So knowing this amount of time is very important. That's a big thing about pro games. You watch them, they maximize their time, how long they can stay in the lane harassing, make it to the pole, don't waste any time, they just hit it and go straight to the, the lane to get the creeps. Some of your games, you might notice like, ah, I'm here 10 seconds, I guess I'll wait for the pole, right? 
Now, if you really need to do the pull, like I guess it's okay sometimes, but in general, that could be 10 seconds that we are spending a little more effectively. And that all starts with knowing what time it is and knowing, you know, when you have to walk over, not just walking over super early, just cause you're worried. You learn these timings and then you'll always make it on time. So long as you're watching the clock. Now, another thing you might want to know is the stack timings kind of coming back to this minute, uh, spawn is that we can add gold for our team by doing these stacks around 53 to 55 seconds. Again, keep in mind how close you are to the camps, how long it's going to take to walk over. So I would say around. 30 seconds when that starts popping up on the clock, you got to think, do I want to stack? Like, is that important right now? Uh, do I have a chance? Is it too busy in the lane? Then, you know, you can't stack. That's fine. But sometimes you are walking somewhere. It's good to check the time and then take a quick look at the map and to say like, uh, I do want to stack. I probably can't make it all the way to the ancient camp. So let me just stop at this hard camp, do the stack. I have the time for it. Or maybe you do want to do a double stack of the ancient to hard camp and head over there. Every time you miss one of these timings, right? You're losing opportunities. The polls are obviously very important in the laning stage. There's a whole video series on that. If you want to learn more, go check it out wherever. Uh, but that could be the small camp gold for you, 60 gold, maybe the hard camp, hundred gold. Uh, you're denying creeps, lane equilibrium, all of that. That's helping you to win your early game. So we have a good game later on the stacks and accidentally blocking camps. Small camps are 60 gold, medium 80, hard camps 100, and ancient camps 165-ish. So if you do a double stack, ancient and hard camp, you just broaden like 265 gold for your team. That is pretty significant when you think about the fact that a lot of games go about 30 minutes to like 40, 50 minutes, right? So if you remember to stack and are able to, because you can't always do it, um, you stack like 10 times throughout the game, right? That's like a thousand gold you just added in. That's having impact and all of that comes from just keeping track of what time it is. I've seen and done it myself many times, you know, just walking through a camp. It's like, hey, you could stack two, 270 gold you're missing right here. You don't want it. Okay, right? Just because you weren't paying attention to the time. So every time you're not paying attention, you're missing opportunities. So that's why it's important to constantly look at the clock. Some other important times for runes, power runes, two, four, six, eight, so on every two minutes. Bounty runes are every three minutes. The power runes are more important. They tend to be a bit more impactful, though it does depend a bit on who your mid laners are. What, uh, like, do they have a bottle? Who, what runes are they good for? Um, if you're a four support or, I mean, everyone benefits from power runes, right? So it is important to know, uh, especially in the laning stage, to be at the rune right on time to contest it. Bounty runes are a little less important. They tend to sit there for a little bit, so it's okay if you're not there right at the spawn, though it can be good too. Um, as long as you're aware of it, then you can choose how important it is to be at those runes or not, right? But again, we're not even making that choice if we're not paying attention to the time to know that that decision was coming up. So power runes, a bit more important, but really any rune, good to know when they're gonna spawn and keep that in mind for what you wanna do. Then there's the day and night cycle. This is not as urgent in most games. Uh, very important when there's a night stalker in the game or any hero who has increased night vision, but otherwise it's kind of balanced where like if neither team really benefits from day or night, you don't need to know as much, but it is kind of good. Um, for example, smoking at night is not as good as uh, in the day because smoke breaks at a longer range than your night vision for most heroes. So you don't really know where they are and that kind of takes away some of the value from smoking. So it's kind of good to keep track of the time to know like, hey, we're about to smoke, but actually it's about to turn night. And then like, uh, it may not be such a good time to do this. Maybe you still will, uh, that'll depend on the context. But again, you can make that choice so long as you recognize it's coming. The last thing I wanna talk about is the Roche time. So when Roche gets killed, makes a big noise, ping it, and then do the little bit of math, right? Five minutes for the ages to expire, three minutes to six minutes is when it can start to respawn. These are massive decisions you have to make in the mid to late game, right? Should we fight this enemy team? Okay, let's do it, right? And then you find out Aegis was about to expire in 10 seconds, but you didn't wait, and now they get to use the Aegis respawn and they kill you. If you just waited 10 seconds, you would have just gotten a clean kill, right? That's very different in terms of what just happened in that fight. And all that comes from knowing the time and then keeping track of the time, looking at the clock a lot. Or Roche is about to respawn. We better play on the top half of the map. I don't want to see like a full team movement bottom unless there's a very good reason, right? Because uh, the enemy team might just dodge you and then just take Roche. And you wouldn't even know that unless you're paying attention 
to the times. If you know when Roche is going to respawn, and then you're watching the clock for like... 26 minutes. That's when I have to start really playing top with my team, set up my wards there, be ready to play, be careful about TPing to different spots because then I won't be able to rotate up to help. All of those huge decisions come from just knowing the time. So the frequency, you should need to uh, look at the clock probably about every five seconds, right? If we go through this after the laning stage, you know, polling is not so important. So then it probably becomes like, every 10-ish seconds, unless like Roche timer, you're waiting for that, then it's a little more important. Um, but I do recommend generally like about every five seconds would be good. It can help you out plan out a lot of your uh, movements, especially in the early game. And then later you can like start to drop it off a little bit. Pop quiz time. What time is it right now in the game? Were you doing it? For some of you who kept up that exercise I was talking about, very easy. You're just saying like, oh, it's this time. I don't even know what time it is. I haven't put the overlay. I don't know how long I've been talking. For those of you who have been keeping track of it, it's very easy, right? And in the same way, when you're playing Dota and you know what time it is, it's very easy to recognize, oh yeah, I should stack this ancient camp I'm standing right next to. Or yeah, I should do this pull and it's coming up, so I better walk over there. Very clear decision. But if you're not keeping track of the time, it's super dark, right? You have no idea what time it is. And in the same way right now, there's no way to just come up with the time. There's only one way to be able to answer this question. And in the same way in Dota, the only way to know how to do certain actions is if you're keeping track of the time. So if you got this question wrong, you have to like and subscribe. Segwaying into the minimap, we can combine the game time with minimap awareness. So some things to keep in mind, teleports are three seconds to most destinations, six seconds to the outpost, and then some extra time if multiple people are teleporting. Let's not worry about that right now. The town portal scroll itself has a uh, 80 second cooldown. Boots to travel has 40 seconds and then 30 seconds at level two. Walking, if you didn't want to teleport, mid to the side lane is about 20 seconds. Depends how fast you are, depends which side you go. So generalities right now, base to a lane, 30 seconds. Again, depends which lane, depends how fast you are. Let's just go with 30 seconds right now. And then creep waves are gonna show up every 30 seconds. They are very predictable. They do the same thing every game, every 30 seconds. So we can combine all these timings to understand more about the minimap. Teleports, what that tells us is that if a hero disappears for three seconds off of the minimap, they could be anywhere. Anywhere that there is a destination to teleport, they can travel to. This is very important to recognize in terms of like what rotations are possible and what ganks might happen. This is how you learn to play cautiously. Like say you're pushing the bottom lane and the storm spirit is mid. There's a high chance Storm Spirit would love to kill you because you're like, I don't know, a Shadow Shaman pushing bottom, right? As soon as Storm Spirit disappears, I have to start being careful because he could be TPing behind the tower, uh, behind the trees in the tower, and then zip right on top of me and then kill me. And if I don't want that to happen, as soon as I see him disappear, I have to recognize that and make a choice and decide like, how likely is he to come here and try to kill me? Because maybe he is just farming the camp. But if I don't know that because it's fog of war, I have three seconds to decide and then I might be in danger. So it's really important to keep track of map awareness as you potentially do dangerous things. Um, or maybe like another way to apply this would be you're diving. Uh, who's a crystal maiden, right? The poor crystal maiden just trying to defend her tower. Your team's diving her. You have three seconds to complete this. Three seconds until the enemy starts showing up. Now, if you can see them on the map, then you know you're good to go and you can continue to dive. But if some heroes are not showing on the map and you're not sure where they are and you're looking at this low health crystal maiden, you have to ask yourself, can I kill her in three seconds or less? Because otherwise, guaranteed, heroes could show up. In fact, if I don't see them, maybe they're behind crystal maiden. I better be careful. But maybe you saw them somewhere else and then they disappeared for a bit, right? You have three seconds. So it's good to know these kind of things because they will influence how you uh, choose to uh, push certain objectives, how long you choose to stay in lane recognizing that, yeah, I saw that gank hero in the, the top lane, but if I'm farming, say in my jungle, I'm a carry, right? If he disappears for three seconds, right? Let's add some time in. So he could TP to a tower, smoke, and then how long would it take for him to get to me? Mm, 10 seconds, right? So maybe you can finish farming for five seconds, and then you better hide in some trees and get away from some common ward spots for a little bit and watch the mini map and see like, is he gonna show again? Hello? If Storm Spirit continues to not show, he might be doing something. And if you're a valuable target, you better be careful. Again, globally, that can be an issue, right? It's not, he disappeared from top, so I'm scared for top. No, he disappeared from top. He could be going bottom. He can teleport. 
Now, once they teleport, they can't do it again for 80 seconds or 40 seconds or 30 seconds. It depends what they have, right? So Storm Spirit was top and then suddenly he showed bottom. No way to walk there. How do I know that? Because side lane to mid is 20 seconds and then mid to the other side lane is 20 seconds. That's 40 seconds. So if he was top and then bottom in five seconds, no physical way to do that besides to teleport. And what that tells me is that he's now stuck in say the bottom lane for about 80 seconds. Now, the more time that goes on, say 20 seconds passes and I haven't seen him, he could have walked back to the mid lane already. And this is where we have to like, you don't need to know these times, but you need to like have a rough feel for them and like maybe knowing them is good too. Every time that storm spirit disappears from bottom and I know he doesn't have a teleport, I have to start this internal timing, right? Like, okay, I got about 20 seconds. I can push the mid lane. Okay, I got about 10 seconds left. I better start backing out because he's getting close and he might zip the rest of the distance, you know, cover this distance a little faster, right? So I need to be aware that this is how I play safe as I see different heroes go to different places or because I see someone teleport top and I know they can no longer join a fight bottom in any reasonable amount of time. This is the perfect time to like try to take a team fight in that bottom lane, five of us versus four of them because they're missing their mid hero. This is how much time I have to take that chance. I have 40 seconds until he could walk all the way bottom again, or maybe just TP back. If it's getting close to that, if it's getting like 30 seconds and I still see him top, he maybe won't walk down, but he might teleport in, right? So then I, how much time do I have? Can I still take a fight in 10 seconds? Maybe I can't, maybe I gotta wait for the next time they split up. This is how we start adding in all these different, uh, all these different times and teleports, walking and TPing. Now the creep waves, they do the exact same thing. Okay, <laughs> sometimes they do funny things, but for the most part, they do the exact same thing. Every game, every minute, every 30 seconds is they spawn and they walk down their respective lane. So let's say you're uh, trying to cut lanes. You could either learn the different times that creeps are at different spots, or you can look at your own creeps because the creeps mirror each other. So say you're trying to cut the bottom lane, you're hiding in the trees, you don't know when to stick your head out. Look at your top lane, and see where your creeps are. If your creeps are roughly at your tier two tower, in the enemy's uh, lane that you're hiding in, they're probably also near the tier two tower. So even if you don't know the exact same times, you can look at the minimap and look at how the creeps line up and estimate where they are. Maybe on the reverse side of that, you're trying to avoid the creeps, right? You're trying to sneak between different lanes at night, go for a gank or go for sneaky wards, keep track of what time it is, when creeps spawn and how far they've traveled. Again, look at your own side of the map, estimate where they've traveled and know how long you have to wait to avoid creeps. Another way to use this uh, information is uh, an example that came up in a coaching session recently. They wanted to smoke and they did, but no heroes were showing yet. However, if they had waited a little longer, again, creeps do the same thing every game. So the creeps will slowly push into the enemy side and they will provide information. Every step they take, they reveal more of the map that might show an enemy hero. And if after a few seconds, all the creeps start fighting each other and it's on the enemy's half of the map perhaps, and no one is showing, that is suspicious. Where are they? No one is in any lane. So maybe they're grouped up, maybe they're smoked, maybe they're doing something. And we know that because creeps always go back. And anytime you need information, wait for the creeps to get to where they need to be and start like fighting the enemy creeps and then watch those. See if anything's going on. Or if every hero is missing, you can actually click on those spots and see if you see a spell being cast from Smoke of Deceit trying to push the wave out sneakily. You can see those uh, spells being used and then uh, get out of there. But all that comes from like constantly watching the minimap and when you need information, let the creeps give you information. Let them do their thing. How often do you have to do this? As much as possible. It ties back to this idea that teleports are only three seconds. So as soon as someone disappears off the map, unless you know the teleports on cooldown, they could be anywhere. So you gotta start being cautious. That doesn't mean you have to fully stop whatever you're doing, but say you're a core aggressively split pushing, you better have your finger on that BKB button. Better be real quick on the reactions when they like try to blink stun you, something like that, you know? And you know to turn on that, uh, that preparedness by keeping track of the minimap and knowing how long you have in different parts of the map. So really as much as you can is good. Different times of the game will call for more or less minimap um, awareness, different roles. 
uh, I don't want to say this, but I, I feel like I need to. Everyone should have good map awareness. But support players, because you are not last hitting as much, and because your job involves the, the warning, you really need to be good at reading the minimap. You need to know where the enemies are putting their wards, uh, what your wards are revealing for your team. You know, you need to know how to read this and call these like bigger team plays because we aren't doing all this like sweaty last hitting and like moving around. You know, the cores have to like press the buttons real fast. So we need to look at the minimap a little bit more. That is how it tends to uh, play out where support players have a bit more map awareness as part of their role, but it's a pub and it never hurts for everyone to have good map awareness, right? As long as you have map awareness and then you communicate to your team, anyone can do it. So if you're a mid player and you can read these ganks happening, you know where the wards are happening, why hold that information to yourself? Share it with your teammates. It is good in every game for every player. So I really don't want you to think, oh, I'm a mid player. I don't have to look at the mini map, Zach said. So that's not, I'm not saying that. You know, everyone has a responsibility to contribute to the map awareness because not like one person cannot look at the minimap the whole time. You will miss stuff as an individual. And that's where you have to say like, hey, where's Storm Spirit? And then someone else who was watching can say, oh, he's right around here. You know, this is how you help your team avoid ganks, um, know like where to go, where wards are, stuff like that. Everyone pitches into this, but supports are maybe, you know, a little more responsible than other roles. As for actual things we are looking for, obviously heroes. I kind of already uh, alluded to this. We are looking for where they are, what they're doing, uh, which way they're facing is actually quite helpful in my opinion. That's why I prefer the uh, the pointers rather than like hero icons or hero names. You can't really tell what direction people are moving in or facing. Uh, for example, they're standing still in farming. Sometimes not so clear from an icon uh, or a name. So I prefer the pointers, uh, but it's kind of personal preference. You do whatever, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Like, where are they going? What directions are they moving in? What do they have? Because, you know, if you see a hero in the, the jungle, this also includes then like clicking on them and then seeing their inventory. So heroes, very important to know where they are on the minimap. That's probably priority number one. Other things you can look for are observers and sentries. So you go through the trouble of placing wards, use them, look at your minimap, understand what information they provide. You can see people jungling, walking through, um, or you can see some of these other things we're going to talk about. Only, you know, you only get value out of it when you're looking at the minimap. But of course, you also want to know when your wards are dying naturally versus the enemies dewarding them, right? If a ward survives six minutes and was pretty good, like, mm, well, maybe I'll just place another one there because I like it, right? But if someone dewards it, I don't want to just put another one there. I'm just going to lose it again, right? As soon as an enemy checks a spot once, you should be very careful about putting another observer in that same area unless you have a very good reason to. So a lot of you don't do this part. You, you lose an observer and you're like, hmm, I want another observer there. And the enemy, they lose their sentry. They go, hmm, I want to check the same spot again. <laughs> you know, you only know to avoid that if you are keeping track of the minimap and watching what the enemy supports are dewarding and where they're warding. So you know to go and deward there. This is how you save some money spamming out sentries. Ah, I know where they ward. I only need to buy like two sentries because I know it's here and I know it's here. And I know they can only have two wards right now. So I'm not going to buy five others and put them in other spots. I just saved myself 250 gold and five sentries. So observers and sentries are a big thing we're looking for. Uh, Smoke of Deceit is another one you can, at the easiest, you know, see heroes just disappear off the map. That is Smoke of Deceit. Um, but there are other signs you can look for to uh, tell if, some, if a team is smoked. For example, you have an observer and a sentry in your jungle. And if you're looking at the minimap and suddenly you see an observer pop up on the minimap and there's no hero around that, that means they are smoke right there. And you can ping that. You can go, guys, they're smoked. Oh! And then you know, because that observer came out of nowhere. And even if they're an invis hero, they will reveal themselves when they place an observer or a sentry. So there's really no way to do it. Like if you have an observer down, I guess like Monkey King from Trees could maybe do it. And there's probably some like niche cases of like heroes from Fog of War can do it, you know. But if it if an observer or a sentry appears out of nowhere, you don't see any heroes, you need to ping it and say like they might be smoked here. Sometimes you know they're smoked. It kind of depends where the observer slash sentry showed up. But that is a very big um, telltale sign of the smoke of deceit. Another one is the creeps disappearing. Just suddenly a burst of creeps die and no hero is there. Either a hero was in Fog of War using a spell 
or they are Smoke of Deceited in the lane using a spell to push out the lane and hoping you're not noticing. So this is another way you can tell. Um, another way is the Couriers. So Couriers, great to know where they are because you can kill them and then you get gold, you de 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 delay the enemy items, great. It also lets you know where heroes generally are. So you see two Couriers headed bottom, you're like, hmm, two enemy heroes in the bottom lane. That's good to know, right? Sometimes you can tell where they smoke of deceited because you have wards set up like along your river and you see two couriers cross and you go, that's very interesting because I didn't see any heroes cross. Hmm, they might be smoke of deceited. Another telltale sign is if the courier just turns around. No reason, right? I'll tell you the reason. The courier finished its job. It delivered the items. So if you see the courier like enter a ward and then just turn around, there's someone there. They're invis, they're smoked, I don't know, but there's a very high chance someone's there. Now, if you can actually click the courier in time to see what items are being delivered, that's great. And that would also let you know for sure whether it uh, just happened to turn around because they're like, oh, I also want an observer, I forgot. Go back and get that. Um, or it actually delivered the items. You can see it if you click the courier in time. You only get to know to do that if you're watching the minimap to see these movements go around. There are the runes. Uh, this one's not so important but it is a quick check, uh, like uh, uh, double damage top. You know, you don't have to like click on your minimap, look at the actual rune spot and see what it is. You can just take a quick glance at the minimap and knowing what runes are going to pop up is important. Uh, especially let's say, um, cause I, this sounds like silly, but like, let's say you're in the bottom lane. This is the, the practical application. You're in the bottom lane and the mid laner is going for the rune, but you're still like doing last hits or whatever. And you don't want to move your screen. So if you glance at the minimap, you can possibly see the rune flash right before the enemy mid like instantly picks it up as it spawns. And so you might see like a blue flash and you're like double damage or like a green flash. That's a regen rune, right? Purple rune. And then the hero disappears, right? Hmm, invis, I think. So that's how you can like tell what power runes are showing, um, which most of the time you can probably just move your camera over and look, but that is like a niche application of that. And it is good to know. It's very important, right? Hey, this... Huge cooldown hero, Enigma, just picked up an arcane rune. Probably should try to black hole soon. We better be careful, right? Another thing you can look for are spells. So some spells show on the minimap. Um, Zeus Nimbus, right? You're looking at the minimap and suddenly you see a little, uh, look like a red dot, show up in the top lane. This actually gives you a lot of information. Zeus is pushing out the top lane. So I know we're going to have to deal with that. He's pushing it out with Nimbus. So in the future, however long it takes the creeps to like move out, one, someone's going to have to deal with top. It also tells me Zeus is probably not in the top lane. Otherwise, he would have just walked to the creeps and used spells. If Zeus, not, if Zeus isn't in the top lane, but he felt the need to push it out, it probably means no one else on his team is in that area either, which means a lot of heroes are probably mid to bottom. Maybe they're dead. I don't know. But there are probably very few heroes top, like... None to like one or two, maybe somewhere further away. And Zeus is just greedily farming before the carry can get there. I don't know. You know, sometimes people are bad, but if we're assuming they're good, then seeing that spell is actually providing me a lot of information. Oh, also Nimbus is on cooldown, you know? So you can now TP safely and not be worried about getting Nimbus canceled or like, hey, we can take a fight. He's missing a big spell, you know, something like that. Um, it can also tell you the position of heroes. So Zeus Nimbus is global, doesn't show anything, right? But uh, clockwork, you can see where the rocket flare is going and you can like do a little bit of a uh, math. You're like, hmm, the line goes this way. He's probably somewhere over here, right? And now you know where clockwork is. Or uh, ancient apparition, the tracer shows on the minimap. The the actual ult does not, but when you uh, start AA ult, right? And he goes, whoosh, right? That dot shows on the minimap and you know exactly what angle and you don't know the time, but you can estimate it. The, uh, the actual ult is going to follow very soon once it arrives at the destination. So that's how you can dodge those. Uh, what else? Some teleports show up on the minimap. Io, Underlord. Uh, that's how you can know you're about to get ganked and about to die. You better react real fast, right? Um, maybe pop BKB and just TP out instantly. Uh, you know, maybe that's an overreaction, but at least you know that it's coming, and so that might be your course of action. Um, what other spells show? In the jungle, the creeps, they do the little tornado. They don't do that randomly when no one's standing there, right? Um, so if you suddenly see a tornado icon on the minimap, it means an enemy hero might be there farming. Um, trying to think of some other spells, but uh, I'm sure they'll come to me. You can see some of these. 
Uh, so, oh, the last thing I want to say, Fog of War. So this isn't quite the minimap, uh, but it kind of is. So it's, it's a bug, but it's in the game so long that it's a feature now that some spells will randomly show through Fog of War. Not, not even saying like they're in Smoke of Deceit, like it'll just show through Fog of War. So if you look at the minimap and you actually don't see any heroes or you don't see enough heroes and you're very suspicious and you're like, I don't know how to gather more information than this. I just know that all the enemy heroes are missing. You can physically drag your minimap and look around the whole map and see if you can spot spells through Fog of War. And that would let you know at least one hero is in that area. Roche is another one you can do. Um, probably the easiest application of this. All heroes are missing. I don't see them. Click on Roche on the minimap so that your camera moves there and see if you just see flashes of spells in the Roche pit. Again, it's a bug, but it's a feature. So like everyone has access to it. So I feel like it's fair. Um, even though it's not really the way the game was intended, it is in the game. And so since everyone has access to it, I feel like it's fair game. So I'm going to tell you guys how to use that. So you can uh, take a look at the Roche pit if every hero is missing. And I guess I'm just saying like there's more information than is on the minimap. Like even if nothing's showing, that's a lot of information. But you can possibly collect even more information by looking for spells showing through Fog of War by like dragging your minimap around. And then a bonus frequency tip here. Every time you see a hero and you haven't checked on them for a while, go ahead and click on them, check their inventory, check their mana. The more you do this, the better. This is one of my weakest habits. I made a video on this in the past, um, but this is good to do. Uh, let you know, you know, what items they're building, what uh, what their mana is, how ready are they are to fight. It's good to check your own team as well, just in case. You know, some people aren't the best at communicating, so it's like, ah, he's also building an assault curious. I probably don't need to build one, or uh, you know, he has no mana, even though his cooldown is ready. Like, and the green dot is showing at the top of the map. You're like, oh, Enigma's ready to fight. And then you look and it's like, mm, he doesn't really actually have enough mana to use all his spells. So like he could probably just black hole, but I would really prefer him to have more mana, you know? So it can be good to check your teammates as well. Um, but yeah, anytime you see a hero, I guess, on the minimap, this is something you'll practice. Like click over, click that hero, look at the bottom of the screen. This is when you would look at the bottom of the screen. Otherwise, you're just looking at the time, the minimap, time, minimap, time, minimap. Hero, click, look at the bottom. Okay, back to my hero. Pop quiz, where are the enemy heroes right now? If you were watching the minimap, then you know, and you know where to go, where is it safe? What, uh, I wanna gank someone, who should I go? Are they split up? You know all that. And if you weren't watching the minimap, it might just be the same way you play Dota. And you play Dota blind and you're just minding your own business, suddenly get ganked by two heroes and like, oh, I had no idea he was here and you're pinging your mid invoker. You're like, how come you didn't tell me he was missing? And then you watch the replay and you're like, huh, that void spirit walked through two wards, picked up a double damage rune and then ganked me. Why didn't the invoker tell me that? I could have avoided my death. Right? That means you weren't looking at the minimap for like 30 seconds and a very telegraphed gank that was very easy to avoid killed you. That sort of stuff can happen all the time. Of course, that's a very exaggerated example. Sometimes it's much smaller, right? Whether you know to start a fight, to avoid a fight, uh, where to go for smoke gank, all of it ties back to the minimap though. So if you got this question wrong, make sure you floss tonight. Now practice makes perfect. So this is, you know, this video is just the start. I very much doubt that if you didn't have this habit before, you watched this video and now it's a perfect habit, right? It's still probably gonna take a couple more practice attempts. So here are a couple ideas. So for example, you're gonna have to make awareness your main goal for several games and you're gonna suck. You're probably gonna lose these games and you're gonna blame me, but this is good for your long-term growth. You need to enter a game with the sole goal of not winning or losing, but improving your map awareness. And you are going to constantly look at the minimap. You're gonna constantly look at the time. You're gonna check enemy inventories. You're just gonna go way overboard. In the same way you went overboard in this video, hopefully practicing the eye movements and everything. In the game, you're gonna go way overboard into checking items, um, looking at the minimap, checking the times, pinging Roshan, all that stuff. And then eventually you go back to playing like normal, but hopefully, all that overkill practice, when you tone it back down, is still better than where you were before, and so you've now improved your map awareness. 
Now, if you don't want to like lose ranked games, do them in unranked, maybe uh, do them in arcade games and still practice through it. Even though the map awareness and time are not important in arcade games, it's the exact same action and keeping aware as like things are happening in the main screen to find time to look at the mini map and the time. So you can practice that in an arcade game or you can kind of do what we did this video go open up a replay. You can accomplish multiple things here. If you want to learn a new hero or just improve a hero you like already, go find a pro replay, load it up, and either watch from free cam or player perspective and just practice what we are talking about. Watch from their perspective, look at what they're doing, but constantly look at the time, constantly look at the minimap. You're going to find that that explains a lot of what that pro player is doing because they're doing the exact same thing while actually playing. But while practicing, it's hard to do everything at once. So let's, you know, split it up, load up a replay so you don't have to do all the hot keys and the clicking arounds and just practice the motions while still learning because you're going to see a pro player play the hero. Um, and then while you're in the client, something you can do that isn't possible through this video, you can then move the camera, click enemy heroes, snap back to the hero uh, you're watching, which is a little hard because the uh, select hero hockey doesn't work in replays, but it's just going to be more practice for you maneuvering the minimap on the... Uh, the, or the, your screen through the minimap. So it's good practice in its own way. You can also try to think of things that uh, remind you to do this, because that's kind of the hard part. I think a lot of you know map awareness is important, but setting up the habit of doing it uh, can be tough. And one way to do that is to have like reminders. So one example is every time you get a last hit, you look at the minimap. This works a little better for core heroes who get more last hits, um, but it can be one way to uh, provide an in-game reminder when you associate last hits with minimap. So you get the last hit and you're like, oh yeah, minimap. Oh yeah, minimap, right? And you constantly look over. The issue with the reminders is that reminders are not consistent. Uh, so like you're not farming and you forget to look at the minimap anymore. Um, so it can be a way to help, but uh, you also want your minimap awareness and time awareness to be very consistent even when things are not happening to remind you to look. That is the ultimate late game goal. But in the meantime, if you need help developing this, then reminders are a great way to do it. It also doesn't have to be in the game. Write it down on uh, like a sticky note. Look at the mini map, dumbass. And then like stick it all around your monitor, you know? So, uh, you know, like as you're playing, you happen to glance down, you're like, oh yeah, the mini map, look over, right? These kind of like little reminders. Then you can uh, do some like mental practice. And this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound silly and super try hard. And I guess it is, but this is kind of stuff I did um, that I think does help, especially if you don't have time to play that many games and sit at your computer and you're busy. That's me nowadays. Visualize this stuff. I, in preparation of this video, I think of practices, I did this, right? While I'm trying to sleep, close my eyes. I visualize myself at this desk. I imagine myself looking at the monitor. I'm imagining a Dota game and I'm looking at the middle, up to the top, in the middle, at the minimap, middle, minimap, middle. I am, it's the exact same thing, but actually not physically doing it, just mentally thinking about it. If you can't like sit at a computer and do it. And it does sound like a real sweaty try hard thing to do, but I don't know. This is how I build habits and I'm a real try hard uh, for video games. So this is something I literally did. Um, I did other things to practice kind of awareness. Like I used to work in restaurants um, and there's a lot of downtime in the restaurant. So I'd wear a watch and while I'm waiting for people to show up, I will not miss more than five seconds. Every time I did, I was like, look at the time. It's 103, very interesting. Oh, it's 105 now, very interesting. 107. And I would do other things at the same time to try to mimic playing Dota, but keeping a bigger awareness to like check other things. So like I'm folding silverware, right? Fork, knife, time. Okay, wrap the time, right? Wrap this one, finish, time, you know? Or I would write out ideas. I don't know if I have, they're somewhere in this uh, apartment. I would write down ideas for Dota videos and I constantly check the time as I'm writing words, check the time. Cause that same idea of like doing something and remembering to do a secondary task. We're playing Dota and remembering to gather information at the same time and not getting too sucked in to the individual uh, mechanics that were when you know last hitting or whatever. Your homework is to practice this concept. Now I don't care how you do it. You can do one of the things I suggested and I didn't just like make those up. Like I actually do some of these, but if you have a different idea, as long as you think it'll help you improve your awareness, help you practice this idea of like playing the game, doing one task while remembering to do the second task of gathering information, however you think will help you the best, do that. 
Because to build the habit, it's not so easy as just knowing I got to do it. You have to actually sit down and practice the motions. Uh, that's, you know, personally what I believe. So that's your homework. Get to it. Uh, if you want to see this in practice, I did recently release a video. Uh, it's part of a series called Game Plan, where I kind of explain like what you can do next. And the recent video, which I'll link, really heavily emphasized map awareness, reading the map, and how to understand what to do from there. So if, uh, if you want to see like a practical application of this, check that out. Um, and otherwise, I don't know, keep out an eye for uh, future videos like this. We'll be going through more of the skills from that uh, how to get out of the trench video I made. Um, and how to actually improve and practice those as well. Thank you, and I'll see you in maybe one of those future videos.